So in this video, we're gonna look a little bit closer at our crystal resonator and how we can approximate it in our circuits. So our top figure up here is actually our circuit diagram for our crystal resonator. And so that kind of makes sense if we think about the common structure that we saw on the previous, in the previous video, where we essentially had almost like a parallel plate capacitor with that quartz in between two electrodes. So our circuit diagram is just this sort of capacitor looking symbol with a solid block in the middle of the plates. Our equivalent circuit for this crystal resonator looks something like this. So we have several components here. So over here on the right side, we have what's called our crystal shunt capacitance, which is our C naught. So this is our crystal shunt capacitance. And so for frequencies that are far away from our resonant frequency, typically this is just going to act like a parallel plate capacitor. And as we're gonna see with some typical values a little later on, this is usually on the order of femtofarad. So very, very small um, capacitance. And so femto, remember, is 10 to the minus 15. So we have micro, 10 to the minus six, nano, 10 to the minus nine, pico, 10 to the minus 12, and then femto, 10 to the minus 15. So very small capacitance value. Over here on the other side, we also have uh, a capacitance term. And so this is what we call the motional capacitance. And so this is basically related to the movement of this crystal. We also have a motional inductance related to that movement. And so again, we're not going to get into the details of how that relates. We're just saying, here's our equivalent circuit. Um, how can we use that? And then we also have this loss resistance, basically modeling the fact that this isn't an ideal lossless um, sort of connection here. And so basically this left half branch, our emotional capacitance, emotional inductance, and loss resistance are used to model this, this um, crystal resonator around our resonant frequency. So speaking of our resonant frequencies, we're gonna have sort of two characteristic frequencies. And so they're gonna line up with the two sort of conditions of resonance that we've actually seen before in ENG301 two characteristic frequencies. Uh, the first is going to correspond to a series resonant frequency, and the second is going to correspond to a parallel resonant frequency. So our series resonant frequency, which we're gonna call F sub S, what basically happens is the reactance of C and L over here in this left branch are canceling each other out. So remember when we looked at resonant frequency way back in junior year, we said that we have a zero imaginary uh, part to our impedance. So that means capacitor impedance and inductor impedance are canceling out. And of course, because this left branch, these two components are in series, that's why this corresponds to our series resonant frequency. So now our second one is our parallel resonant frequency. And so with our parallel resonant frequency, we basically say our left branch can be approximated as a capacitor, or sorry, a, a, an inductor. And that is going to be canceling out with our C naught, our crystal shunt capacitance. So this parallel resonant capacitance is F sub P. And this is, let's just say above F of S, the series branch behaves like L. So it behaves like an inductor. So if we come up here and we look at the series branch and we say our inductors dominates as we get above that series resonant frequency, well, then that's in parallel with this C naught. So then the two of those can resonate together and we have our parallel resonant condition. So let's look at some typical values for a crystal oscillator, just to sort of get a feel for this. So as we've already mentioned, typical values of that shunt capacitance C0 are on the order of femtofarads. Um, in this case, for the example that's given in the 
um, Stephen textbook, we have 5.8 picofarad, so a relatively large value in terms of the shunt capacitance. Our emotional capacitance is 42 femtofarads, so also very small. Our L value is 3.3 Henry, and our loss resistance is 385 ohms. So with those values, what we can do is we can calculate our general series resonant frequency, and so that is given by omega s over 2 pi, where our omega s is 1 over root LC. So we have 1 over 2 pi, square root of LC, since we just have a simple series RLC circuit. And our Q, our quality factor, is given by 2 pi fs times L divided by R. So if we plug in these sort of standard values here, what we see is this gives us a resonant frequency for our series resonance that's approximately 427.5 kilohertz. So that falls into that range we mentioned in the previous video of tens of kilohertz to megahertz. And we have our quality factor Q is approximately 23,024. Uh, so again, that's one of the advantages of these crystal resonators is they have a very high quality factor. And again, keep in mind back in our junior level course, we said that Q greater than 10 meant we had a high quality circuit in terms of series or parallel resonance. So of course, having this Q up in the thousands is something that's very desirable in terms of being at a specific frequency and not having a large band.